This video has been filmed on the lands of the Gadigal of the Eora Nation. We pay respect to the elders past and present and to any First Nations people watching. As we share our knowledge, teaching, learning and research practices within this university, may we also pay respect to the knowledge forever within the Aboriginal custodianship of country. At Sydney Analytical, we tackle a wide range of cultural heritage questions. We have a wide range of scientific techniques that we use to analyse cultural heritage objects. We use vibrational spectroscopy, and now, very excitingly, we have infrared reflectography. Infrared reflectography gives us something very different to a lot of the other techniques that we use at Sydney Analytical. So where we're able to study either the molecular bonding of materials uh, with Raman or, or infrared with vibrational spectroscopy, this gives us a very different way to look at um, the more visual picture and to see design processes rather than materials identification. It's a very visual medium and it's very good for communicating with wider audiences and, and also for revealing quite a lot about paintings that might inform some of our other research. It adds a complexity to what we're able to understand about a work. The infrared wavelengths penetrate through surface layers of paint. So in the surface layers of paint, you might have fine pigment that's dispersed in a binding layer. And that is the thing that allows these long infrared wavelengths to travel through and to actually see what's underneath. So light will reflect back from the bright white um, of the ground at the back of the painting. But where there's a carbon rich material or something underneath, that absorbs a little bit of the infrared light. And so when it comes back to the camera detector, you, that's where you get your image. So this is a Canon 5DS, 50 megapixel digital 35 mil SLR and we removed the infrared filter. The first object that I uh, photographed with the converted camera was a power artwork. John Power's known for drawing up a grid pattern uh, in pencil before he does his artwork. That wasn't visible to the naked eye, and so the first experiment for me was to try and reveal that. JW Power is probably our single most significant artist in the art collection. We hold over a thousand of his works. He um, graduated from medicine here at the university in 1905, went to London where he practised as a doctor through the First World War. He gave up medicine and turned to practice as an artist. He went to Paris, uh, studied with Fernand Léger at the Académie Moderne in 1923, and that was really the most modernist of art schools in Paris. His painting, La Femme à l'Ombrelle, the woman with the umbrella, mm -hmm. is a quintessential Parisian scene, a fashionable young woman sitting on the sidewalk having a drink, really is the embodiment of Parisian modernity of the 1920s. The puzzle of the painting is that it's a cubist painting, so it leaves the viewer to puzzle out the details of what exactly is going on. I had success almost immediately when I pointed this camera at it. The IRR imaging revealed there was some gridded pattern underneath the paint, but what we found were that um, some pigments were more transmissible than others. Cadmium orange um, allowed greater transmissibility and we could see quite clearly the gridding um, underneath the paint, but we had to sometimes trace it across the painting. So you might go from an area where you could quite clearly see some gridding through an area where it remained obscured and then resumed again on the other side of the painting. And uh, that was good for learning a little bit about which pigments are more and less transmissible, but also um, it was clear enough to tell us that there was what was expected underneath the work. Pahal was a highly intellectual artist and his book reveals some of his theories about pictorial composition, which he brought to all his paintings. And he believed in an underlying geometry that informed the work of most artists from the Renaissance on. And I think by looking at the IRR findings, you can see how he was employing 
these geometric and, in a sense, highly scientific modes of thinking in his artwork. Based on the drawings, he brings to it all the fascination with underlying geometries and the investigation shows how he's gridded up the composition from what would have been probably quite a small drawing onto a large vertical canvas, almost two metres high. We were able to see exactly that process of gridding up. I mean, there may well be more information that is um, gained with your more sophisticated technology, but it's fascinating to see that that's the process of going from drawing to painting. The hidden is always tantalising, and I think that the combination of science and serving art can be um, a revelation, and it's a wonderful way to rethink and revalue parts of our fabulous collection. Mm -hmm.